Today I would like to speak about analysis of variants, ANOVA. Where does it come from? You will never guess. It comes from considering different kinds of potatoes. It was discovered by Ronald Fisher. Why? Hmm. You will hear it in the lecture. I would like to speak about ANOVA, the analysis of variants. The motivation to this talk is very, very simple and very agricultural. Supposing we have two kinds of potatoes and we want to learn if the two kinds have the same mean weight or not. So, theoretically it's a very simple question. But first, the analysis of variance is a statistical method for examining observations that depend on one or many factors acting simultaneously. This method explains uh, with what probability the isolated factors may be the reason for differences between the observed group means. Analysis of variance was created uh, in the 1920s by Ronald Fisher. Variance analysis models can be divided into two groups. One-factor models, where the impact of each factor is considered separately, in this case of issues is dealt with by one-factor analysis of variance. Multifactorial models, the impact of various factors is considered together. This class of issues is dealt with by multifactorial analysis of variance. So, returning to our question, are the means of these potatoes equal? That's our hypothesis, and we shall be assuming that variances are equal. What do we do in this case? We're trying to find a, a good test. You have a variety of tests, and all you have to check is check the assumptions. So, we have two student tests for independent groups. So, first question. Do the observed feature into groups have normal distribution? Yes or no? Well, we can assume that in case of potatoes, yes. Now, the next question is, are the variances known? Well, practically, we, we can assume we don't know the variances. So we say, no, we go to the left. Are the variances equal? So let us assume the variances are equal. They are, probably. So in this case, we are landing at test T. So what does test T uh, mean? Let's recall that the zero a null hypothesis is that mu1 equals mu2 and alternative is that mu1 is not equal to mu2 and we are assuming that the variances are equal. So then, then we have the following statistics well known where M and M2 are means of the samples taken. We are taking samples of N1 and N2 elements and we obtain some means of weights and we obtain some standard deviations, S1 squared, S2 squared, and we calculate it using T-student distribution. Okay, so we find the uh, test value and we uh, compare it against the critical value for T-student for given alpha, the level of significance, and that number of degrees of freedom, n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay, but what happens if we have three kinds of potatoes? Then we have to make three tests. Okay, but if our level of significance is 0, 0, 005, then the certainty level is 1 minus alpha, which is 0, 095. So, if we make two tests independently, then the certainty of our result is 0, 9, 0, 5, because we have to multiply the two. And for three tests, the certainty of result is 0, 8, 5, 7. Okay, so far it's not a tragedy yet. But what happens if we have to perform 13 comparisons, 13 tests? Then the certainty of the result is, as as it can be easily calculated, 0, 0,51. So, you might as well be tossing a coin. Okay, 
When does it happen? You can say 13 is a big number. No, it is not a big number. It's enough to have just six kinds of potatoes. Then, by performing pairwise testing, the level of certainty is becoming 0 for 6. Why? Because um, we have to take 6 choose 2 tests, which amounts at 15. So practically, uh, calculating pairwise, you obtain just a level of certainty less than a half. So tossing a coin would be more certain in this case. Well, how can we solve this problem? Uh, Ronald Fisher dealt with this problem. He was working on a farm. He ran a farm. He made a, a lot of survey. And uh, he was a British geneticist and statistician, created, among other statistical methods of maximum reliability variance analysis, ANOVA, and linear discriminant analysis. Not only this. He was dealing with 26 kinds of potatoes. So, in this case, if we assume the variances were equal, he had to perform 26 choose 2, giving 325 tests. And the certainty level, if alpha is 0, 0, 005, in this case, would become, look, nearly 0. So, it doesn't really make sense to check pairwise. So, we have to invent something else. The contributions Fisher made, including the development of method suitable for small samples, like those of Gossett, you remember the student creator, and the discovery of the precise distribution of many sample statistics. Fisher published the design of the experiments in 1935 and the statistical tables in 1947 and many other books. Anyway, his books revolutionized agricultural research for they describe the methods now used in the world over for evaluating the results of small sample experiments and for so laying the experimental trials as to minimize the disturbances due to heterogeneity of soils and the unavoidable irregularity of biological material. Okay, this is also uh, the man who was performing the experiment which first, tea or milk, and what's the general trick? You remember that variance is practically a sum of squares, uh, squares, uh, differences between uh, the values obtained minus the mean of the sample squared. And all this, if you sum up the squares, you divide it by n minus 1 to have a better estimation. And n minus 1 is the number of degrees of freedom. Okay, that's uh, just a reminder of the formula for variance. The fundamental technique of ANOVA is partitioning the total sum of squares into components related to the effects used in the model. For example, the model for simplified an ANOVA with the one type of treatment, this is what we're speaking about today, of treatment at different levels is given by SST equal SSB plus SSW, where SST is a total sum of squares, SSB is sum of squares between groups, and SSW sum of squares within groups. And the number of degrees of freedom can be partitioned in a similar way. One of these components that for error pretty specifies a chi-square distribution which describes the associated sum of squares, while the same is true for treatments, if there is no treatment effect. So we have the formula DFT equals DFB plus DFW, where DFT is total number of degrees of freedom, DFB is number of degrees of freedom between groups, and D of W, number of degrees of freedom within groups. So we have N minus 1, this is for total, equals K minus 1 between groups, and N minus K is within groups. So, uh, what are the assumptions of analysis of variance? Let's state it clearly. So the first is that feature investigated is measurable. Second is, we have k-independent populations with normal distributions, with means mu i, 
and variance is sigma squared for i equal 1 to, to k. So we have k groups of potatoes, for example. All distributions have the same variance. All of those, we can assume all of those have the same variance. Then, the null hypothesis that all the means are equal, meaning mu1 equals mu2 equals mu k, and h2 is not all means are equal, meaning mu1 not equal to mu2 or mu1 not equal to mu3, and so on and so on. The, the negation of a conjunction is alternative of negations. That's why we have or now between the conditions given in null hypothesis. Now, how do we calculate and what? So we have the source of variation is between samples, within samples, and total. So um, as for degrees of freedom between samples, is, we have k minus 1 within samples n minus k, and total n minus 1, or n is the total number of potatoes or uh, objects measured. So, let me calculate the mean squares. What are the mean squares? The sum of squares divided by the number of degrees of freedom. So, as for between samples, we have SSB divided by K minus 1, because we have K, K groups, K um, independent groups, so divided by K minus 1. As for within samples, we divide by N minus K. And then, what is important? What's the measure of the experimental influence, or of, of what's the measure of difference between the um, between the groups? Is the ratio between mean squares for betweens and mean squares for withins? So, when we, will we say that there is no difference? We will say. So, if f is very, very small, so if the squares between are so are small um, in comparison with the squares uh, within, okay? So, the smaller is the better. If it is very small, then it, we, we can assume all potatoes are equal, or the means are equal. So, we have to find the test value f and compare it against the, um, the quantile. The quantile has three parameters of, in this f-test. It has alpha, which is the level of significance. K minus one is the number of degrees of freedom between, between groups, so meaning uh, number of groups minus one. And the third, third is n minus k. And if f is greater than this quantile, then we reject H0. Otherwise, H0 cannot be rejected and we have to claim all the groups are have the same, have equal mean. And what if H0 is rejected? If it is rejected, then um, we have some difference between them. We make series of post hoc tests, one of these, analysis of contrast, and related tests, for example, Sheffer test, test based on grouping of means, Turkey, Duncan, Newman, Calvus test, inference based on confidence intervals, then we can use Benferroni and Dunnett tests. Okay. <laughs>